Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Matt Estrad. I'm a gerontologist, and I help Catholic families who are impacted by Alzheimer's and other types of dementias to help find strategies to make life better and to also utilize our beautiful Catholic faith on this challenging journey. I'm very pleased to bring in our guest today, Dr. Tom Neal, since 2012, has been with the Notre Dame Seminary in New Orleans as a professor of spiritual theology, director of, Institute, the, of the Institute for Lay Ecclesial Ministry, academic dean, and director of intellectual formation. He's also a faculty member of the Institute for Priestly Formation at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Tom has spent two decades plus serving in adult formation in Florida as well as Des Moines, Iowa where he was director of the St. Joseph Education Center. He has led hundreds of retreats, workshops, and catechetical events throughout the United States and is an active writer at his blog, Neil Obstat. Tom has been involved in the seminarian and deacon formation programs in Florida, Iowa, and Louisiana. Tom received a Bachelor's of, Ed of Arts in Philosophy and a Master's of Arts in Systematic Theology at Mount St. Mary's University. He pursued a doctorate at Florida State University, specializing in spiritual theology, and successfully defended his dissertation on the writings of St. John of the Cross. Tom has been married to his wife, Patty, for 25 years, and they get together they have four children, two boys and two girls. He's an amateur meteorologist and ornithologist, and he loves to read and write poetry in his free time. Tom and his family are members of St. Clement of Rome Parish in Metairie, Louisiana. Tom, happy Feast of the Immaculate Conception. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Happy Feast, Matt. I'm well. Thank you for that gracious introduction. It's uh, an honor to be here with you. And having listened to you and your work before and read your book, uh, I, I'm, I'm especially delighted to be here with my own family history. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I know our audience looks forward to hearing your thoughts on this, as you as you mentioned, your family history and and, and, and other things. So, mm -hmm. so this we we're recording this on December eighth, twenty twenty, the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Yes. While our audience won't hear this until January of twenty twenty one, can you tell us a brief history of this feast day and Holy Day of Obligation? Sure, be happy to. So, the feast day today of the Immaculate Conception is the feast of the conception of Mary in the in the womb of her mother Anna. Her, her parents' names by tradition, early tradition, were Joachim or Joachim and Anna. Uh, and in the, the tradition is, the, the church's teaching and tradition is, is that Mary, when she was conceived in the womb of Anna, was conceived free from sin. Uh, and I like to say that Mary was conceived free from sin, not as the great exception to humanity, but as the great exemplar of all humanity, because God in Christ has destined all of us to be freed entirely from sin. Uh, in the in this world, but in the next world, most perfectly. So Mary, in our tradition, who is the new Eve, right? The beginning of the new creation, the mother of the new Adam. Uh, just as the first Eve was created without sin, and then of course fell, uh, the new Eve also was created without sin, uh, but did not fall, but remained faithful to the end. And the other element of this that's really important for Catholics to emphasize, especially to our Protestant brothers and sisters who want to believe that every human being uh, was redeemed by Jesus Christ, um, we, we, we believe in our faith that the Immaculate Conception happened for the power of the merits of the death and resurrection of her son, which is an extraordinary thing, by the way. So her son, who did not yet, who was not yet conceived himself, redeemed his mother before her own existence began, uh, freed her from sin from the very instant uh, of her conception. But indeed, Mary was freed from sin, though. Mary was just not passed over by sin, but she was redeemed um, from sin, which is why in the Magnificat, she calls God her Savior, God my Savior, who saved her. So, so that's the beautiful feast today. And of course, it's nine months before her birthday, which is September 8th which the church does magnificently, like Jesus's conception is, is on March 25th, and he's born on December 25th, the nine-month period. Very lovely. Very lovely. And I, um, and I should note that today on your blog, Neil Obstat, you have a great article about the Immaculate Conception, uh, some, some, of the, some of the points that you brought up here. And I'm going to make sure that while the interview will come out in January, today on, on December 8th, I'm going to send that. We're going to put that on Facebook and um, on our on our Facebook page and my personal page. So people get to benefit on this very day. So thank you thank you so much. <laughs> Tell us about your work with aging with dignity in Florida. 
Sure, I'd be honored to. Aging with Dignity uh, is it's a nonprofit organization that's been around since 1995, founded by Jim Tui, uh, that has been and is dedicated to advocating for a, a, a just and compassionate culture of care, especially for the elderly who are so vulnerable at the end of life. Uh, and it, it advocates for a, you might say, a holistic, life-affirming uh, approach to care at the end of life, um, and, and especially had in mind uh, the opposing of the culture of assisted suicide and euthanasia that has slowly crept in more and more right into our culture. Mother Teresa was really the one who helped inspire Jim Tui to start it as a way to care for the poorest of the poor, whom she identified uh, as the elderly who are often abandoned and left without support and care and love uh, and left to die. So it's really beautiful. It has a Catholic kind of inception behind it and, and an inspiration within it. Um, and I was asked to collaborate with it as a faith and ethics advisor about 15 years ago and have worked with them consistently all these years. It's a real honor. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not solely Catholic, but you would say it's a it's a Christian That's correct. organization. Well, it's a Judeo-Christian who's on their board. There are Jewish and Christian, Jews and Christians both on their on their board. So it's kind of a Judeo-Christian mm -hmm. vision of the human person, the dignity of the human person made in the image and likeness of God. But but certainly has a, a uniquely Catholic inspiration, but but in the best of a Catholic vision, has a universal reach, right, outside right. the church, because we believe that our view uh, of human dignity and of ethics is a universally access accessible one. You don't need to believe in the Bible to understand what we teach about human dignity mm -hmm. and life. So, yep, so it is. But it has a, it's a Catholic inspiration, but it's a universal kind of reach. And it's I think it's the most, uh, their, their advanced directive is kind of the most used one, at least in the United States right now, or the most popular, I don't know the right way to say it, but it's it's uh, which represents that five wishes represents their their vision of human dignity. And you meant you just mentioned five wishes. Can you talk about that? So I'm fortunate that I I, I found the five wishes when I think I was at a a uh, senior services uh, luncheon and we had a hospice nurse that uh, told us about it. I was you know immediately you know my ears perked up and I really like the idea of the five wishes. Can you tell us about this document? Sure, of course. So uh, Five Wishes uh, is an advanced directive or living will, as, as I guess it's sometimes also called, um, that has five basic wishes expressed. In other words, these are the five things that a person for themselves wishes to happen when they find themselves faced with end of life decisions or medical decisions that have to be made, at least without their being able to consciously be aware um, uh, of, of what, what's happening and be able to decide what's happening. Uh, so, and those five wishes include the usual uh, medical directives having to do with medical decisions that need to be made. Um, so they have those in place and, and they're worded very carefully in a way that makes sure that they are oriented towards life affirming decisions. And actually we created a companion document for Catholics in this case called Why Catholics Use Five Wishes, which showed the bishops directives, ethical directives that go along with decisions like food and hydration, um, or life support and so forth, how you make and make those decisions and discern. Um, so it's, it's got that kind of life affirming orientation, but it also has a more holistic approach, which is it looks at the, you might call the existential needs a person has at, at the end of life, who they want to be with them in the room, what pictures they want in the room with them. Do they want spiritual support and care from their, their pastor, their minister? Um, do they want, you know, a certain blanket that really is important to them? What, th those kind of very human, beautiful things that can be forgot, forgotten rather in the medicalization of death when you, you, you kind of set aside all those human touches. So it's, it's a beautiful, holistic view of the person to make sure that everything this person wants to happen, uh, that, they're, um, that their representative, they're, they're, what's, what's the name of the medical representative I'm blanking right now, they're the, the uh, healthcare proxy. Yes. Uh, interprets the document and make sure that their wishes are applied uh, co uh, correctly according to that person's mind. So and it also encourages, five wishes encourages that most important part of advanced directives, which is the conversations that you have with loved ones and family and the people around you who will oftentimes be providing the care or be your care partners, as you so beautifully say in your book, uh, along the way. So you have those conversations far in advance and not just at the moment of crisis. So it, it's it's really beautiful for having, and not just conversations about, do you want tubes? Do you want food, you know, artificial, uh, you know, feeding? But but 
how do you want to be treated? <laughs> how do you want to deal with pain? What is, you know, how do you want to be supported? Do you want people with you? Do you want music? Do you want, support, you know, do you want to be left alone? There's just so many of those difficult conversations. Uh, and I found in my own family that, that it allows us to have that in a beautiful human way and not just in a technical legal way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad you, uh, thank you for explaining that. And I'm glad you told me about the, like the Catholic companion document to that. I was not aware of that. So I'll, I'll make sure I check that out and also post a link for our, uh, our listeners. Yeah, please. And, and I also wrote a companion for it called five, uh, five reasons of faith for five wishes. So in other words, why five wishes is, is really conducive to a faith approach to end of life and to serious medical issues and, and the challenges of frailty at the end. So thank you for letting me say that. Oh um, yes, absolutely. All right. So you have, uh, you, I understand that you've, you, you spent some time working in a, uh, a Jewish nursing home. Is that correct? I did. I did. And is, this, is this prior, is this prior to caring for, is it your mother that had yeah. Alzheimer's? Yeah, it is. My, it was prior, my, not Alzheimer's, my mom had dementia, but, but my mom had dementia, um, really between probably 2008 and 2019 when she died. Um, but I was, I worked at this Jewish nursing home as a, as a volunteer, um, a chap kind of chaplain volunteer, mm-hmm. uh, because I, 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 well, for lots of personal reasons, I decided I, I wanted to, to, to have this experience of being with people at the end of their life and, 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 and the elderly, um, in 1989. So long, long before, uh, uh, my mom's situation, mm-hmm. uh, and it was in West Hartford, Connecticut. It's called. It was called. Was called a Hebrew Home. I understand now. It's called the the Hebrew Center for Health and Rehabilitation. So it's expanded out now. But it was called the Hebrew Home, and it was a, a Jewish nursing home. As I remember, it was an Orthodox Jewish nursing home. So they really they kind of lived out the Jewish piety worship law uh, in, in a robust way. Mm-hmm. Um, but lots of lots of. So I had to learn a lot about Jewish laws to be able to make sure I wouldn't do anything incorrect. For example, on Sabbath, I had to be very careful what I did and didn't do. Right. Um, and there's a lot of funny stories around that. Like, for example, on the, on the Sabbath, Jews can't light a fire, which includes making a spark, which means turning a light on or starting a stove. You can't do any of that. You can't start a car. So they would have me, the, the Gentile, start the car or turn the light on. <laughs> I used to say, okay, so I go to hell and you get to be saved. That's not fair. <laughs> Some work around for them. Wow. <laughs> but it was beautiful. Uh, and it was my first experience with with old age in that way. I mean, uh, the people I work, I spent most time with, there was one woman I remember who was a stroke victim. And all she could say is a one and a two, a one and a two, a one and a two. She couldn't say anything else than that. And the frustration in her face as we try to communicate and she tried to say things. I'll never forget that. That And I would go there and, and spend time with her and we'd just sit there quietly and she'd say a one and a two over and over again and I would try to try to make that part of a conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had, uh, other women, uh, particularly women who had, well, I guess was dementia. I don't know if it was dementia or Alzheimer's. It was memory loss. And dealing with them every time I would come, kind of either not remembering who I was and why I was in their room or just you know, telling me the same things every single time and just learning what that's like. It, it was really a, a profound and challenging experience for me. Um, and then one little last thing, there's a long story I could tell, but I won't, um, but I'll tell you a little bit of it, which is the Sabbath every, every week. They did the Sabbath, which begins on Friday evening, and they would have a beautiful service in the main community room that the rabbi would lead. And the Sabbath service introduction is so beautiful, and music and singing and candles and then food. Uh, and the songs were in Hebrew and some of them in Yiddish. Um, and, and during the week, a lot of the elderly people who would be out, for example, on the front foyer, just sitting there in their wheelchairs, looks like they're waiting for someone to come, you know, that didn't come. It was always heartbreaking for me. I'd never experienced that before. Um, they'd be sitting around in the lobby. They always just looked very, you know, very vacant, very sad. But on Sabbath, when they'd come together in that room, these people would come alive. Yeah. And you know what's beautiful is that people who had memory issues, when the rabbi would start singing these traditional Sabbath Hebrew songs, they would sing every word of it. They would smile. It would bring them alive. Uh, it was like watching these people become human again. And I thought, well, that's, you know, that's the purpose of the Sabbath. The purpose of the Sabbath is to remember that we are human beings first, that are not judged by what we can do or our capabilities 
or our performance. Our dignity is based on simply our existence. And that Sabbath made them feel that again, that they were worthy just being uh, and they could celebrate that in song. And it was so powerful. And it just showed me the power of faith, of religion, of liturgy, of ritual, of song, um, all of that to, to remind us of our dignity and the beauty of, of God, God's creation and, and of us as his creation. Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. How, how long were you there in the, uh, in the volunteer Ten position? Ten months. Ten months, okay. Months and then I moved. I left. I lived in Hartford for about uh, just over a year, uh, and then I moved down to Maryland after that. So I I stopped. And I used to get every every week uh, the rabbi and I would have lunch together. And he was a uh, from New York, so he had that New York Jewish accent. I always thought Jesus probably had that accent. If Jesus probably <laughs> had a New York Jewish accent, he was he was a character. And we would have these conversations about you know theological differences and practice differences. And I remember one Advent, it was Advent, and I was telling him about Advent. And he's like, "What you know? What's this Advent thing?" He explained it to me, and I, I said, "You know, it's when we kind of prepare for the coming of the Messiah." He goes, "Prepare for the coming of the Messiah? You have no idea what that's like. Don't give me that. <laughs> he's been for three thousand years, and he's not here yet. You know, <laughs> I'll tell you what it's like to wait. Anyway, so it's beautiful." <laughs> It was beautiful, though, and uh, it, it, it was the first time I really appreciated the, the incredibly important link between Christianity and Judaism or Catholicism and Judaism. And I got involved after that in Jewish Catholic relations everywhere I've been, mm -hmm. uh, trying to facilitate dialogue, mutual mutual kind of collaboration, things like that. It's always been a joy uh, to do that. And anyway, it was a blessing. Yeah. Wow. Um, tell us. Um... Let's shift into talking about your family and your sweet mom and, and, and how was sure. that and how did how did you how did you bring in um, your knowledge of the Jewish nursing home into the care that you provided? Sure, that's it. That's a it's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Um, so my mom, well, I'll talk mostly about my mom, Peggy Neal um, of happy memory. She died uh, in September 6th of 2019. Um but my dad, so my mom had dementia and died from complications related to dementia. Specifically, she was stopped swallowing, stopped mm. being able to swallow. Uh, and then the complications that came out of all that. Um, my dad also had dementia and died of complications from dementia one year before my mom. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Um, my dad and mom had divorced many, many, many years ago. So my dad was, you know, with my stepmom up in, in New England and she cared for him and she, so she was the primary caregiver of him up there. I was the primary caregiver with my wife of my mom down here. Um, so I watched my dad from a distance. My dad's was much more really, it was very difficult. My dad's dementia was full of lots of, um, hallucinating, violent outbursts, the sundowning, extreme sundowning, all, all those kind of different things. Um, you know, need for restraints, all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was it was really really awful. And I I just my my stepmother, it was I, I know that was an immense cross for her um, that she bore primarily. She had a support, of course, but she really bore primarily. My mom's was much more gentle and and sweet, um, and 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 with with some occasional exceptions to that. My my mom was just a sweet disposition person, um, but. Uh, and my grandparents also, they both, they both died of Alzheimer's on my dad's side. So we got a little history there. So every time I forget something, my wife always goes, uh, <laughs> honey, <laughs> you okay? Yes, I'm fine. That's an interesting thing, by the way, that kind of, and my siblings, the same thing. We kind of always have that in the back of our minds, you know, for ourselves, which is yeah. an interesting side conversation, by the way, I'd love to have with you off air someday. But anyway, uh, my mom, so my mom, back in like 2008 or so began to develop first signs of, of dementia, you know, forgetfulness, um, confusion, uh, particularly driving, you know, getting lost driving and then not knowing where she is suddenly. And then, you know, et cetera. So that began. And then she moved, we, we were living in Iowa at the time she was living in New England. And then in 2009, she moved to Iowa to be near us. Uh, and we began really our, she lived in an assisted living facility. We began our kind of care, partnering with her then, as you say, beautiful. I love that better than caregiving, by the way, because that's such a passive relationship of, of us doing for her things like an object. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, so so we began then and it was really it was fairly minor then, you know, uh, just little forgetfulness, short term memory issues. And 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 then some other things kind of came up then. 
we moved to Louisiana in 2012. She went back to New England for a year to be with my family while we transitioned. Then she came back down here again in 2013 and, and then from there on stayed till she died. And in those years that she was here in, in New Orleans, also at an assisted care facility, Chateau de Notre Dame uh, in New Orleans, magnificent, wonderful. We have nothing but phenomenal things to say about our experience with that place. Um, her short-term uh, memory loss slowly got worse, and her sense of time began to, you know, to to, to leave. You know, you know, losing a sense of time and place. Uh, she was easily confused. Anytime she'd go out of a very structured schedule, uh, so she, you know, we we you had the same thing every day she had to have. And if you varied from that or varied from that, she would get completely confused. So we worked very hard with the chateau to keep her life regular and routine mm -hmm. as much as possible so every day from 2012 until she died i called her twice a day every day first thing in the morning last thing in the evening first thing in the morning last thing in the evening every single day so that she always had me to help her orient her day to start and her to end her day with a kind of view of what happened and then what's coming up the next day and then and that was a beautiful thing and that was i'll tell you it was like it was like it's like a rosary <laughs> every day right it was like this rhythmic relationship with my mom um mostly we'd say exactly the same things every time you know uh, i knew what kind of things were good that she loved to hear so we'd say the same things every time and do that day after day week after week month after month year after year uh, and certainly i'll tell you there were, of course it was times it was challenging to do it right it was challenging it was like i, I don't feel right now like calling yeah. <laughs> like doing this right or or every weekend we'd have her over for an entire day and evening and dinner every single weekend and, and then occasionally uh, other days um and then those you know that was every weekend every day and so that you know that our family life had to be built around that the kids events what we could do with them traveling all those things as time went on became more and more restricted um around this to, to be able to give her that stability and constant contact and regular, because I knew as soon as we would break that, she would, f she would go into uh, panic, uh, fear, disorientation, uh, even delusions, a paranoia, people are out to get her, uh, you know, they're going to kill us, you know, things like that. So we, we did that uh, for all those years. Um, uh, and, and, and with, you know, it, it wasn't just me at all. Um, it was my siblings, it was my wife, because even though one spouse in a marriage might be the primary care partner with a parent, for example, the other one has to support that, right? Right. Um, and, and step in and do things when the other one can't or when the one, when I'm going to, for example, when I'm just worn out and I just can't do anymore and it's emotionally too much, you know, my wife just steps in and to keep the rhythm going for my mom. And, and there's, you know, a million things I could say about that, but I'll say that it's funny because when my mom had uh, one afternoon when she was eating, evidently she aspirated food and then developed aspiration pneumonia, uh, which set in motion the whole trauma that led to her death. Um, uh, um, my, my wife uh, uh, was... It was really extraordinary because my, my wife that morning when I got the call from Chateau in the morning saying your mom's oxygen level is extremely low. She's barely breathing. We have the ambulance coming, et cetera. And I was, you know, I was completely, <laughs> you know, I felt like I, you know, was disoriented and my wife took my shoulders and she looks at me and she said, I'll take care of everything else. You love your mom. You have this now go. And it, and that moment, right, I felt completely empowered, like all of the confusion of all the things I was thinking, what do I need to do, all of a sudden were brought down into focus by that moment by my wife. So it really, that partnership of the care partner with other people around them to support them, I, I, don't, I don't think I could have done it if I hadn't had that moment with my wife. Um, it was like, a, I can say, it, it's like an epiclesis, right? The calling down of the Holy Spirit uh, on the gifts at Mass when she put her fingers, hands on my shoulders. It was like the Holy Spirit just came on me in that moment and said, you know, this is this is about your mom, not about you. Uh, and so I was able to, over the next nine days, it was nine days from then till she died, that I was able to be with her and, and care for her. But um, my point is, is that what that did, my mom went into the ER and had, you know, a, a very, you know, intubated briefly, and then deintubated or whatever you call it, and then kind of bringing her back. But when she came back into consciousness, she was gone. 
who's like the dementia, as the doctor said, all the, 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 the rhythm of the life that you have been living have been keeping the symptoms of dementia very kind of limited control. But now that this is kind of all come apart, yeah, everything is manifesting. Now, of course, I don't, I'm not an expert. I don't know if that's exactly true or not, but, but it was not the same woman uh, that, that next nine days that I knew before. Uh, and it was hard to relate. It was hard to, it was hard to process that because in an instant, I think I lost my mom uh, and she's still there, you know, trying to speak to her and relate to her. But in the last days, two days before she went unconscious, so she died on a Friday, she died on a Friday, by the way, at 3.03 p.m. on a first Friday. Oh, wow. And she, and she was a first Friday devotee, you know, first wow. Friday is dedicated to the Sacred Heart. She was a first Friday devotee and she died right at the hour of the Passion. We had just finished the Chapel of Divine Mercy mm -hmm. and she she breathed her last breath. Incredible. But um, the, the days before, so that was Friday, but but on Tuesday and Wednesday, she became lucid again, completely lucid, 100%. And we had conversations. I put her on the phone with siblings. Uh, my sister came and was able to have, uh, you know, anyway. So it was really powerful. And I was able to say last things to her that I always hoped I'd be able to say, but that I was afraid earlier that I wouldn't be able to say. And by a, a grace that I, I, I was given that I didn't expect, certainly, uh, I was able to, we were able to exchange a beautiful last exchange. And the Archbishop, the former Archbishop of New Orleans, Archbishop Hughes, um, who had a great relationship with her, by the way, would visit her all the time at Chateau, would go to her room. He just had real solicitude for her, beautiful, loving, fatherly um, relationship with her, even though she was older than him. <laughs> but he was very fatherly with her. Uh, he uh, came to the hospital, and when my mom became lucid, just happened to come at the right time, and she was able to give a last confession. And she was able to tell him, to tell me, when I die, you tell my son that he is to have no regrets. I'm ready to go. I want to be with God. You tell him that. And that was incredible, right? As a gift for a mother to give a son. Because the burden of guilt that you carry, you know, when you yeah. do everything you can, but you can't do everything, um, uh, to be able to have that from her um, was incredible. And it was mediated by a bishop. How perfect, right? Bishops are mediators. That's their priestly identity. And of course, she mediated that gift uh, of herself with the Lord and then her with her son and her family. So anyway, so it was an incredibly grace time Um yeah, so I'll stop. I, can, I mean, I'm just kind of, I, I can say so much. Uh, maybe I'll pause there if you want to say anything else, Matt. This is the first time I've got gotten teary-eyed during a, an interview. That's just, I appreciate your testimony, and it's just so beautiful that she was able to pass on that message. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you for allowing it and for having a show where that's an appropriate thing to do. And that's, I mean, this is a great, this is an exemplar of, the graces that we find when we're faithful uh, to our Catholic faith, when we avail ourselves to uh, to our bishops, to our sacraments, and yeah. we take a uh, what, what most of society thinks is the the most horrible time that could be, which is your death, into something that can be beautiful. And I think that's a what you just explained. What, that was a great great example of that. Yes, thank you. Thank you for saying that, and and, and, I, and I to honor my mom because you know I my grandfather used to say to me uh, before he died he died when he was ninety nine my grandfather of Alzheimer's but when he was still um, lucid and he would write me letters he said be sure you tell your nana and pop there were nana and pop to us my grandparents be sure you tell uh, your children about your nana and pop because if you love someone you'll always remember them right? you'll always remember them. Tell them about us. Uh, so I always love to be able to tell things about my mom or if I talked about my dad, about my dad and so forth. But but I want to say one more thing about my mom, which was really a, a beautiful testament to her character. And I know, by the way, with my dad's experience of, of dementia at the end, I know the experience is not like this for everyone because I know it can be very painful and, and, and they don't have those moments because I know both of them because I had both experiences with each parent. But my mom, so this is the last night she was conscious, a Wednesday night, and we, our family gathered around her bed, and we did her favorite thing, was to repay the rosary. Now, if I had had this, <laughs> we could have, uh, your book, we, we could have really incorporated that ourselves, but, but we prayed the rosary with her, which is beautiful. And my mom 
no problem. Every prayer, she's on it. Even if she's like, you know, forgetting everything that's happening around her, where am I? Or, you know, why did they change the artwork in my room? You know, in your room, Ma, this is the hospital. <laughs> but she knew her rosary, man. She had every prayer down and she was thumbing those beads. And, and we prayed the rosary and we finished the rosary. And my mom at this point had not been able to eat food, right? And she had received IV, She was, but she couldn't eat. She couldn't. She couldn't swallow. So she's very hungry, even though she had the IV providing her nutrients. Mm -hmm. And at the end of our rosary, we're saying, oh, my, you know, the kids are going to just giving her hugs and kisses and they're going to leave. Um, and before we left, my mom said, I want all of you to go out to dinner tonight on me. And it's going to be on grandma and I'm going to pay for it. And I was extremely like uncomfortable. I'm like feeling massively guilty. I'm like, you kidding, mom? You're going to go out to dinner while you're here in this bed? You know, you can't eat. I'm, you know, so I'm thinking this in my head. And she looked at my face and she could see my face, my expression. And she took my hand. She goes, this is your mother speaking. <laughs> you, you go to dinner. She said this. And then she said, if you go out and eat tonight, it'll be like I had a feast. So go eat. Wow. And I thought if there's no greater articulation of love than that phrase, if you feast, I've eaten, even if I have nothing, right? I mean, that's that's it. So, and that was a beautiful just summary of of the best of my of my mother and what she handed on to me um, uh, as her legacy and her grandchildren, and her her daughter in law, and, and and so many others. So, so my mom, uh, not a perfect woman. None of us are perfect. I don't ever want to idealize anyone, but she had that magnificent um, love about her that, that right to the very end was was present so anyway i'll stop there yeah and this i mean this is what we have to look forward to i believe if we're faithful to the rosary if we've we're faithful to the blessed virgin mary for that is it called final perseverance that opportunity to the sacraments that's right end? yep absolutely and she prayed for to saint joseph oh i don't, I don't as long as i can remember for happy death that was her like because St. Joseph is the patron of happy death, because St. Joseph, when he died, had Jesus and Mary with him. You can't get happier than that. So uh, he's the patron, so she always prayed for that, and and she, I mean, she got it. I mean, just before she died, I told you what happened. We prayed the chaplet. Just before we started the chaplet, Father Mike, uh, Father Mark, rather, from um, Father um, Mark Thibodeau from uh, Loyola's um, Holy Name Parish, just happened to walk into the room, just happened to be in the hallway, walk into the room, and anointed her and commended her to God. And then it, 16 minutes later, she died. Wow. I mean, anyway, so happy death. So she prayed, St. Joseph came through, man. He's powerful. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, Amen. and our lady. Is, yeah. So I know that you're involved in the formation of deacons and priests. How, how yeah. do you, um, how would you suggest, or how do you, how do you do if, if, if this is part of your, current role or you have opportunities to do this or if they're listening right now how do you what what do you ask them to consider when they are accompanying someone who's experiencing dementia and, and even death sure. sure no it's it's a it's a great question um i i think i think the greatest thing uh, let me i'll just i just use my own example in terms of what happened to be instead of trying to be more prescriptive and sure. in general um when my mom was going through the, I don't know, the last year or so of, of her um, dementia, which was getting more difficult, and just the, just the, the, the routine of the every day and the weekends and the, and the challenges that made for our family schedule and, and the things that we could, you know, became wearing on me, and I began to, be, to become resentful. Um, and, and, and I went to confession once and I remember I go into confession and I kind of poured this out, tearfully poured this out to the confessor and said, I know, and, and, and he was just, he was just beautiful. He was, he was incredibly gentle and supportive. Um, and, and said, you know, you're, you're doing, you know, what you can and your mother ap ap appreciates it so much. And even if she can't articulate, you have to know. And that God sees everything that you're doing. He sees it. And, and you know, you have to give yourself a break. He was very gentle. But then he said at the end, he said, I, I always like to tell um, people, especially people who have parents in old age who have infirmities or issues that, that weigh on the children. 
he said that uh, I believe that the fourth commandment, right, honor your mother, and your father, is of all the commandments, is the one with the potential to sanctify you most, to make you holy, um, because parents um, can, uh, with all the issues in, involved in in their lives, especially at the end, can 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 challenge you in some powerful ways. Uh, so I want you to think of that um, not as a guilt burden, but but as an opportunity to grow in holiness and in love, uh, and, and and to let your mom do that for you. And it was very, it was, it was just so supportive because it was both an encouragement. He gave me encouragement and consolation, but he also gave me a challenge. Right? It was both. I needed a challenge, but I also needed to be, you know, encouraged. I needed to be supported, but I needed both. I don't need him just to say, "I'm so sorry, you poor guy." Or I don't need him just to come down hard on me and say, what are you, a jerk? This is your mother, you know. Uh, I, I need, uh, and I think that that balance, that ability to balance it was was perfect. And I, I remember after I left the confession, I thought of a, a line that my grandfather, who wrote me a slew of letters over the years with lots of advice on life, he was a beautiful, beautiful man, beautiful grandfather. He said to me when our first son was born, he wrote me a letter about parenting advice. And he and my grandmother have been married for about 72 years at that point. They were married 76 years when that when she died. So, uh, and he said to me, when your son is born, uh, if people tell you you become a father when your son is born, he said, they're liars, don't believe them. He said, your son will rip fatherhood out of you with every cry, with every smile, with every tragedy, with every success. He will make you into something you would never have been without him. And I thought, that's what my mother did. That's what my father, she made me into a son. She made me into someone I could never have been had she not pulled it out of me. Mm -hmm. um, and it hurt. It was painful. Um, and, and, but, but, that, but, it's a, but it's a, it's a gift. And so it, the priest or the deacon, the one who's the minister of the Lord, who speaks with the voice of Christ in a unique and particular way, can give us that encouragement and consolation, but also the challenge to say, uh, ultimately, the, right, life is about learning to love. And every time you're in a difficult relationship, you have to find what is the way that love can come out here, right? Where there is no love, put love, and you'll draw out love, as St. John of the Cross says. So anyway, so those are, I guess that's a very, based on my personal experience, um, a general way of, of, of thinking about it for priests. And I lastly also say the seminarians, I always tell the seminarians, you know, when you're when you're a, when you're a priest and a minister, make sure that you hang out with the people that don't give you good cash value feedback. In other words, make you feel good about yourself and like a hero, etc. Be with people that draw you out of yourself. People who may not, you know, like so celebrate mass in a nursing home. You're not going to get afterwards people going, oh, amazing homily, Father. I loved you know it was fantastic and you know I went. I went to give a talk at a, my mom's assisted living care facility once. And I remember all these elderly people came into the room with their, you know, walkers and wheelchairs. And the lady sitting up in the front had this hearing aid that throughout my talk, she kept going, <laughs> adjusting it. It was screeching. And I was trying to give this profound reflection. And at the end of the reflection, I finished my talk. And there's a little tiny smattering of, you know, clap. And three people are sound asleep in the front row. And one, <laughs> and one lady goes, that was very beautiful, but if you just said God is love, it could have been a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. But, you know, I didn't get all that good feeling I get from the people who say, oh, wonderful, inspiring. It was, yeah. you know, so, so, so to be with the people, but the people that need your companionship and your love and your ministry and your presence and your gift that you have to offer. Um, not just the people who give you great feedback. So, so, and, and when you with the elderly, it's it's a mix. It's not one or the other, but they can they can definitely draw you out of yourself in ways that normally you wouldn't. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It does. Yeah. Awesome. The seminarians are lucky to have you. Oh, uh, it's a, it's an honor. To, honestly, it's an honor to teach in a seminary. It really is. It's an it's an honor. I never take it for granted. But thank you for saying that. Well, we're going to go ahead and do the rosary in a moment, um, but I want to give you a chance to mention anything you didn't get to that, you know, that I didn't get to ask you about. Is there any closing comments before we move into the Holy Rosary? No, that's a great question. I, I don't think there's anything in particular I want to say, other, first of all, other than thank you for being a witness of what the lay vocation looks like, which is taking the, the genius of your own professional life, of your family life, 
and then bringing faith to bear on it and bringing it to bear on faith. So that's what it's all about, what you do. So thank you for being that. So I can say to people, I teach my, my theology of the laity is my heart passion. And so I, instead of having to, to, to give all these ideas and points, I just say, look at, look at Matt. Look at this. This is how you do it. That, that's how it works. Um, talk to him. Uh, so, so thank you for that. And then secondly, I just want to say that I, I always want to, I love to, love to point out that on Holy Family, the Feast of the Holy Family, which is a beautiful feast right after Christmas every year, the first reading from Sirach specifically mentions memory loss, right? It, it says, uh, my son, take care of your father when he's old, grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate with him and never revile him. Right, so beautiful. So, so this particular um, challenge is put straight in the center of Holy Family, the feast, because this is one of the greatest uh, crosses, but also the greatest opportunities for blessings and love and pulling together in a family and, and, and all of that uh, as a whole package. So, you really bring that out in your book powerfully. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for your, thanks for your words. Yes, you're welcome. All right, well, we're going to. Uh... We do our holy rosary. If y'all, everybody in the audience will get their get their rosary reads or not, just follow along with me and Tom. If you are listening to the uh, to the uh, to the audio podcast, know that the rosary will continue on another track. So please make sure that you've joined us for that. I know you're really going to enjoy this and receive the graces from it. Mm. All right, I have my rosary, and today we're going to do the sorrowful mysteries. Um, so uh, let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He ascended on the third day. He rose again, and he ascended into heaven, uh, where he is seated at the right, at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever shall be, world without end. Amen. In this rosary, we uh, we pray for the intentions of all of our listeners and uh, people who are praying along with us. Um, if, if you're on YouTube, you can go ahead and add any special intentions that you would like for Tom and I to pray for, whether you're watching this um, in 2020, uh, 2020 right now or 2025. We'll be praying for your special intentions, dementia-related or not. And I'm going to read the reflection for, uh, for each of the uh, mysteries from the book, just the brief um, uh, prayer. Uh, so the first sorrowful mystery is in the agony in the garden. The prayer from the book goes as follows. Mother of sorrows, we ask for strength, flexibility, and resilience in this confusing time. Help us to make peace with ambiguous loss to be the best care partner that we can possibly be. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. The prayer from the book on page 41. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, we pray that care partners and the medical team invest the time to be detectives, to, to, to look for patterns, and to be inquisitive to find the root cause of the expressions and then the appropriate solutions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Sorry. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning of thorns. The prayer from the book. Lord, we pray that those families experiencing depression and encourage them to speak to professionals for help and safety. May they find peace through prayer, safe medical interventions, and interacting with fellow care partners. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, the carrying of the cross. Our Lady of Peace, give us the awareness to realize we need a break to center ourselves. Allow us to be calm and to serve our loved one. For the times when we do lose our patience, let us forgive ourselves and resolve to improve in the future. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. All right, this last day, last decade, we're going to do the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be in Latin. The fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion of our Lord. The prayer from the book goes as following, follow, follows. Immaculate Heart of Mary, when it is time for the Lord to call us home, we pray for a peaceful death with the people that we want present. We ask for a beautiful transition, a special and intimate moment for our family. Give us the strength to find to have the end-of-life care conversation with our family and doctor before we are ill. Allow us to speak with our doctor about hospice as an option and to see the benefit of comfort care when the time is right. Pater Noster, quies in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum, quotidianum, da nobis hodie, et dimiti no, nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc, et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc, et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc, et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Nunc 
and in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Santo. Sicut erat in principio, et nunc, et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning, and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we beseech thee, that while meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O most gracious Virgin Mary, never was it known that anyone that ever fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. St. John the Evangelist, patron saint of care partners. Pray for us. St. Dimphna, patron saint of those with brain disorders. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. That was lovely. Thank you, Tom. That was beautiful. I've never done that before by Skype. That was powerful. Thank you. It's very, yeah. We, we've, um, forget how many months we've been doing it because I've done the, I've done them by myself, but I think starting in June. So this is the sixth or seventh one that I've had the privilege to do with a guest. So, and, uh, and thanks for, uh, thanks for the, uh, the last day get a decade of Latin. Of course. That was powerful. I loved it. I'm so, so thrilled you do that. Yeah. I love Latin. And, um, uh, want to give a shout out to, uh, my family at the, our lady, uh, our lady of Mount Carmel Latin mass society here in Covington. Hopefully some of them are, uh, benefiting oh. from the, uh, your knowledge. Oh, excellent. Well, that's wonderful. Mount Carmel. I have a great love for Carmel. My uh, work on John of the Cross made me fall in love with Carmel in a whole new way. I'll have to, let, let me know. Um, I, I'll, I'll email you, but I want to learn more about St. John of the Cross and the, the work that you did on your dissertation and, and uh, yeah. after that. Sure. No, I'd be happy to. I, I would love to, to share with you what, I, what I've done with it, especially since then. So Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Really yeah. enjoyed it know you same here thank you for your vocation uh working with seminarians priests deacons and, and the lady really appreciate everything you do and um thank you for your work thanks for being here today god bless thank you i look forward to our next conversation god bless you same here okay Bye -bye.